Limitations of Dimensional Analysis 1. The value of dimensionless constant can be obtained with the help of experiments only. 2. Dimensional analysis cannot be used to derive relations involving trigonometric, exponential and logarithmic functions as these quantities are dimensionless. 3. This method is not useful if constant of proportionality is not a dimensionless quantity. Illustration Gravitational force between two point masses is directly proportional to product of the two masses and inversely proportional to square of the distance between the two. Therefore, F is directly proportional to M1, M2 upon R square. Let F is equal to G into M1, M2 upon R square. The constant of proportionality G is not dimensionless. Thus, earlier method will not work. 4. If the correct equation contains some more terms of the same dimension, it is not possible to know about their presence using dimensional equation. For example, with standard symbols, the equation S is equal to 1 upon 2 AT square is dimensionally correct. However, the complete equation is S is equal to UT plus 1 upon 2 AT square. Accuracy, Precision and Uncertainty in Measurement Physics is a science based on observations and experiments. Observations of various physical quantities are made during an experiment. For example, during the atmospheric study, we measure atmospheric pressure, wind velocity, humidity, etc. All the measurements may be accurate, meaning that the measured values are the same as the true values. Accuracy is how close a measurement is to the actual value of that quantity. These measurements may be precise, meaning that multiple measurements give nearly identical values, that is, reproducible results. In actual measurements, an observation may be both accurate and precise, or neither accurate nor precise. The goal of the observer should be to get accurate as well as precise measurements. Possible uncertainties in an observation may arise due to following reasons. 1. Quality of instrument used. 2. Skill of the person doing the experiment. 3. The method used for measurement. 4. External or internal factors affecting the result of the experiment. Can you tell? If 10 students are asked to measure the length of a piece of cloth up to a millimeter using a meter scale, do you think their answers will be identical? Give reasons. Errors in measurements. Faulty measurements of physical quantity can lead to errors. The errors are broadly divided into the following two categories. A. Systematic errors. Systematic errors are errors that are not determined by chance but are introduced by an inaccuracy involving either the observation or measurement process inherent to the system. Sources of systematic error may be due to imperfect calibration of the instrument and sometimes imperfect method of observation. Each of these errors tends to be in one direction, either positive or negative. The sources of systematic errors are as follows. First, instrumental error. This type of error arises due to defective calibration of an instrument. 
For example, an incorrect zeroing of an instrument will lead to such kind of error. Zero of a thermometer not graduated at proper place. The pointer of weighting balance in the laboratory already indicating some value instead of showing zero when no load is kept on it. An ammeter showing a current of 0 0.5 ampere even when not connected in circuit, etc. Second, error due to imperfection in experimental technique. This is an error due to defective setting of an instrument. For example, the measured volume of a liquid in a graduated tube will be inaccurate if the tube is not held vertical. Third, personal error. Such errors are introduced due to fault of the observer, bias of the observer, carelessness in taking observations, etc. could result in such errors. For example, while measuring the length of an object with a ruler, it is necessary to look at the ruler from directly above. If the observer looks at it from an angle, the measured length will be wrong due to parallax. Systematic errors can be minimized by using correct instrument, following proper experimental procedure, and removing personal error. B. Random errors. These are the errors which are introduced even after following all the procedures to minimize systematic errors. These type of errors may be positive or negative. These errors cannot be eliminated completely, but we can minimize them by repeated observations and then taking their mean that is average. Random errors occur due to variation in conditions in which experiment is performed. For example, the temperature may change during the course of an experiment. Pressure of any gas used in the experiment may change or the voltage of the power supply may change randomly, etc. Estimation of error Suppose the readings recorded repeatedly for a physical quantity during a measurement are A1, A2, A3 and so on till AN. Arithmetic mean A mean is given by A mean is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus so on till plus An upon N. A mean is equal to 1 upon N into summation of Ai, where I is from 1 to N. Let this be equation 3. This is the most probable value of the quantity. The magnitude of the difference between mean value and each individual value is called absolute error in the observations. Thus for A1, the absolute error delta A1 is given by delta A1 is equal to mod of A mean minus A1 for A2, delta A2 is equal to mod of A mean minus A2 and so for An it will be delta An is equal to mod of A mean minus An. The arithmetic mean of all the absolute errors is called mean absolute error in the measurement of the physical quantity. Delta A mean is equal to delta A1 plus delta A2 plus so on till plus delta A n upon n is equal to 1 upon n into summation of delta A i where i is from 1 to n. Let this be equation 4. 
the measured value of the physical quantity A can then be represented by A is equal to A mean plus minus delta A mean, which tells us that the actual value of A could be between A mean minus delta A mean and A mean plus delta A mean. The ratio of mean absolute error to its arithmetic mean value is called relative error. Relative error is equal to delta A mean upon A mean. Let this be equation 5. When relative error is represented as percentage, it is called percentage error. Percentage error is equal to delta A mean upon A mean into 100. Let this be equation 6. Activity Perform an experiment using a vernier caliper of leash count 0.01 cm to measure the external diameter of a hollow cylinder. Take three readings at different position on the cylinder and find 1. the mean diameter, 2. the absolute mean error and 3. the percentage error in the measurement of diameter. Example 1.5 the radius of a sphere measured repeatedly yields values 5.63 meters, 5.54 meters, 5.44 meters, 5.40 meters and 5.35 meters. Determine the most probable value of radius and the mean absolute, relative and percentage errors. Solution Most probable value of radius is its arithmetic mean, which is equal to 5.63 plus 5.54 plus 5.44 plus 5.40 plus 5.35 the whole upon 5 meters which is equal to 5.472 meters. Mean absolute error is equal to 1 upon 5 multiplied by mod of 5.63 minus 5.472 plus mod of 5.54 minus 5.472 plus mod of 5.44 minus 5.472 plus mod of 5.40 minus 5.472 plus mod of 5.35 minus 5.472 the whole meters which is equal to 0 0.452 upon 5 which is equal to 0 0.0904 meters. Relative error is equal to 0 0.0904 upon 5.472 is equal to 0 0.017. Percentage error is equal to 1.7%. Subscribe to my channel. Click on bell icon to get notification about new video.